Lead us, guide us, fill us again and again and again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good morning, amen. all. Amen. Good morning. Welcome with us. We are uh, plodding along through the book of Luke. He is just so detailed and so delicious that we, uh, that we are uh, excited to hear what the Holy Spirit can speak to us today through the book of Luke. So we're in chapter 10, and just as a backstory on it, in Luke 9, Jesus sends out the 12. And here he sends out 70 or 72 or something. Um, and but the 12 only went to the tribe of Israel, and the 72 are going to go everywhere that Jesus is going to go between now and the triumphant entry. So uh, what happened between 9 and 10? Well, the, the, the corner has been turned, and he's, he's heading in these next 10 chapters or so, 9 chapters, to Jerusalem. And obviously after that, there's a triumphant entry, a crucifixion, and a resurrection. But now he has... We, we see him spending time with the three and the twelve, but now we find that there's seventy something in his inner in his inner circle of um, of mentoring. Uh, now we don't know who all their names are or whatever. We know what some of their names are, but none of that matters because what we know for sure is the Lord chose seventy two other disciples and He sent them out in pairs. Go ahead. So we'll pick it up in New Living in chapter 10 and verse 1. Right. New Living 10, 1. Uh, Jesus sends out his disciples. The Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places that he visited. Uh, the, uh, that he is to visit, actually. Uh, these were instructions to them. The harvest is great. But the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him sent to send more workers into the fields. Okay. Now go and That's remember cool. that I am sending you out among the lamb, uh, out as lambs among wolves. Well, let's, let's back off a verse on that. Let's talk about the, uh, about the first uh, camera here. So, sends them out in pairs. Why in pairs? Why in pairs, Rich? Well, uh, you can give a number of answers to that. One is that two is the number of the adequate witness. Yes. Um, it is a, um, it's also a, um, I mean, this is, this is the, uh, the method that he's, he's used in the past for whatever that's worth. Doesn't mean, uh, uh, this is necessary. That doesn't necessarily follow that what he's done in the past, he's going to do again in the future, because he certainly works unique uh, miracles uh, one after the next. So, um, but I think uh, for me, the first the first thing that strikes me is that two is the number of the adequate witness, and two one can put a thousand to flight, and a thousand demons, two can put ten thousand. So there's a multiplication factor there that, uh, in terms of um, dealing with demons, that's, uh, that's we right. can find support for elsewhere in the scriptures. Good morning, Barbara. Welcome with us. So also, one can be praying and the other can be speaking, and then and then they can take turns back. And so, and so essentially, one person has your back while you're doing the thing up front. So one person is obviously speaking but the other one is the power pack because he's praying or she's praying um, so he sent them out to towns he planned to visit uh, two by two and his instructions to them were yeah to um, call upon the lord of the harvest that he might send more workers that's right Go, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. So th that's not for something to whine about, one of the commentators said. But pray. 
we need more help, pray and ask the Lord to send more workers into his fields. Lord, we ask you to send more workers into your fields. <laughs> and just send to do that to him. And so, so pray to the Lord, who is Lord of the harvest, and ask him to send more workers into the field. It's always that we need more help. And, uh, but sometimes we just try and uh, humanly kind of muscle people into something. But no, pray to the Lord and ask him to send more workers to the field. So the harvest is great. Now, in our generation, we don't think the harvest is great. We think, oh, no, people are leaving churches. Churches are closing down, whatever. But, but he says the harvest is great. Now, uh, we, pretty amazing for every time. All that we do is cast the seed. Jesus does the saving. But if we don't cast the seed, then we're disobedient. And pray to the Lord, who's in charge of the harvest, Send more workers. Yes. Okay. Verse three, then. Yeah, I just I just make a little comment uh, on the Please. previous that uh, yeah, it, it really, even though you're dealing with churches and you uh, don't use them as a measuring gauge as to how spiritual uh, an area may or may not be. If people are leaving the churches. Remember, not necessarily, and not necessarily even Christian churches. They may look, may have the appearance of it, but. Um, the Lord is the spirit, the spirit of God. When he moves, uh, that's what you want to look for. Amen. See, to see, to see the actual work of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one who is the driving force today. Amen. Good morning, Verse, Crystal. Uh, Good morning, Crystal. Oh, sorry. Welcome. Yep. Welcome, Crystal. Okay. So this is a scary verse and We'll talk about it. Verse, verse three. Please. Uh, uh, go and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. That doesn't sound like a very uh, protected uh, uh, outreach that the Lord is doing. How do we read that? Yeah, well, remember, he's doing the sending, number one. Yes. So this is his call. Yes. And he's sending out them, sending them out as lambs among wolves, not deliberately into harm's way to be harmed. Right. But simply that they may, as lambs are, dependent on the shepherd. Okay. So we should be remain dependent on the shepherd. And it's uh, and it is dangerous out there. Uh, sure. If you are not, if, no you, if you stray from a close relationship with the shepherd. There's wolves out there that want to eat you. And so, so here he says, you're going out two by two, all 70 or something of you, and uh, I'm sending you out as lambs. Oh, yeah, and there's wolves out there. And like Rich just said, if you don't stay close to the shepherd of your soul, you're in real trouble. And so we honor God. We worship him. We spend time in his presence. We spend time in his word. Uh, we gather together, even if it's online. And uh, that's how we stay close to the shepherd of our souls. Yep. Right. Verse four. Yep. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals. And don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Okay. So this is a... This is a matter of listening to the counsel of the Lord, because later on he says, take your pack, take your extra cloak, take your whatever uh, for this particular journey. So, so sometimes we go one way and sometimes we go another way. And the, 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 the difference between the two is not that the Lord changes his mind, but he wants to do different things with you at different times. So he has different requirements for that particular outreach or journey or whatever it is. Right. But what happens? The, uh, the whole, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the uh, yeah previous verse. Uh, go uh, go. I am sending you as lambs. Lambs are obviously in a, a company of wolves. Are certainly dependent on the shepherd. He's just reinforcing the point 
that he wants them to be dependent on him. So without a bag, without extra sandals, et cetera, et cetera, they're all the more dependent on him. That's right. And that's, I think that's just the point that's trying to, is coming across here in verses three and four. And I think, I think that so often people depend upon their own skills and abilities. So sometimes the Lord puts us in a situation where my skill sets are not enough. My skill sets are not even close to enough. And then, and then I can look and say, okay, Lord, I'm insufficient to do this, but you're not. This is overwhelming to me, but you're not overwhelmed. So we, we, we come to a place in our faith walk where we continue on in the presence of the Lord and just in the flow of the Spirit. And when you're in the flow of the Spirit, things happen to you that you don't understand, that you, that you weren't planning for, and, and the Spirit breathes through you and you're able to do this thing. And then it's the next thing, and then you testify to the goodness of the Lord and then on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Verse 5. <clears throat> Whenever you enter someone's home, first say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. And don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. Okay, so... uh Sorry, I missed the end of verse 4. Don't stop to greet anyone on the road. That sounds downright inhospitable. But but so often when you're called to a place, there's this distraction and that distraction. Well, I need to get to the meeting, but I'm going to go stop and get a burger. And then I'm going to go uh, and I'm going to go to the convenience store and then I'm going to go to CVS and then so so uh, God that we would be exactly where we would be when we should be and be there is um is an incredibly important thing now along the way there may be chances to minister but don't get distracted by the worldly things that are there uh you know I'll stop and watch a movie along the way no be where God wants you to be and don't don't let the distractions of the world um, sway you from the course. Then when you get to the place that you're supposed to get to and you enter somebody's home, say, may God's peace be on this house. Now that's not, that's not an inappropriate greeting even 2,000 years later. You walk into somebody's house, may God's peace be on this house. And, and by the way, every house in America needs God's peace, and every house in the world does. So for you to be, even if they're believers, God's peace be on this house. And if those are who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they not, the blessing will bounce back to you. So, so these 70 folks need to be led by the Spirit into a town or a city, And in the town or the city, they need to be led to the right house. And when they get to the right house, even though they are are peaceable people living there, good morning, Cynthia, we're glad you're with us. Even though there are peaceable people living there, pronounce a blessing of peace on that house. And if it's it's received, it will stand that that a new wave of peace will be on that house. And, and if they don't, uh, the blessing will bounce back to you. So uh, it's, it, it doesn't cost you anything to lay a peaceful blessing on a house as you're walking around it, as you're walking yeah. into a house. Yeah, may, yeah uh, pronounce a blessing of peace on the house. If it's not accepted, uh, it will return to you. In other words, you did the right thing. Yeah. And you're, you'll, you'll know you did the right thing because the peace will be upon you. The peace yes. that you extended uh, will be upon, will come back to you. And right. uh, then you, you, you know you did the right thing. Right. <laughs> you, you 
offered a piece of the Lord and it wasn't accepted, wrong house for that particular blessing. But that doesn't mean you didn't do the right thing. That's right. Verse 7. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. That's a difficult thing in some cultures because some cultures eat weird foods. Now, I have to say that in America we eat weird foods too. But go be gracious about what they provide. Enjoy what they presented for you to eat and then eating and drinking what they provide. And don't hesitate. Go ahead. Sorry. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. The workman is worthy of his wages. Now, I have been in numerous houses as a pastor, as a missionary, and sometimes people just are lavish in their blessing, even though I'm pretty sure that the personal cost for this particular blessing is difficult for them. And I'm so hesitant to, and I often thought, well, this is way too much. You shouldn't do this. But if I deprive them of the blessing of hospitality, then I've deprived them and, in fact, insulted them. So I thank you. This is so gracious of you. I am grateful for having friends like you or, you know, God's people like you. So thank you. And to provide hospitality is an incredibly good gift. Sometimes providing hospitality means having somebody to your home. Sometimes providing hospitality is to take them to the 99 or whatever your favorite restaurant is. And having hospitality means that you have time for conversation. And the more conversation we have with each other, the better off both of us are. Both of us, anyway, both of us are blessed by having conversation together. And often in every culture, conversation over food is somehow more appealing or often is more appealing than just conversation, you know, on the whatever, whatever the lack of food is called. So don't hesitate to accept their hospitality because we who do the work deserve our pay. But also the people who are dispensing hospitality, there's a blessing in that for them also as well as, and it works both ways when I'm in the ministry. People who have, I have been, you know, people have been in my home and I've been in people's homes, so it works both ways. And Sheila tells us, Sheila tells us that her friend was ministering to indigenous people in Central America. They gave her a worm for her meal and she ate the worm gladly, great for the hospitality and the kindness of the people. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird foods that go out that are hospitality that are a delicacy in some places. Eight. Verse eight, if you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you. Heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. But if the town refuses to welcome you, go out into its streets and say, we wipe even the dust of your town from our feet to show that we have abandoned you to your fate. Okay. And know that the kingdom of God is near. That's right. I assure you. 
even wicked Sodom will do will be better off than such a town on Judgment Day. OK, let's try 13 then. What sorrow awaits you, Corazan and Bethsaida? For it had if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago. Clothing themselves in burlap and throwing ashes on their heads to show their remorse. Yes, Tyre and Sidon will be better off on Judgment Day than you. And you people of Capernaum, will you be honored in heaven? No, you will go down to the place of the dead. OK, so. Ouch. That's, that's right. So we have the the miraculous things done in these cities are just so are just so overwhelming and 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 the people know that Jesus is the lord of the miraculous but for some of them it doesn't matter no that's fine just go do whatever you do so it's not just a flat out rejecting of Jesus it it's uh, one of the commentators was talking it's just apathy toward him uh, he is the Lord of all, and he deserves our worship and our glory. And if the people say, que sera, sera, or whatever will be, will be, that's a, uh, that's a curse that brings down on them, essentially, the judgment of God. Now, we don't, just because somebody rejects the message the first time around doesn't mean that they're hopeless. It just means that if they continue in that state, that will be really troubling for them. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the way of death. That's right. The place of the dead, Hades. It's not hell, necessarily, but uh, uh, it's a place of no life. <laughs> and uh, you do, you, that's not the path you want to take. Um, Eight, 16. So, verse 16. Then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. Wow. So now let's not get arrogant with this. God has sent you on a good and godly message. Now, if you're annoying, obnoxious, prideful, or whatever, um, that's not that they're hating the gospel, they're hating uh, your arrogance. Uh, so, or my arrogance, however it works. So, uh, so to say, okay, God's judgment is on you because you don't like me, be careful with that. But, but, the, but as the gospel goes out in pure, in lovely, in joyous uh, tones, then the people have a chance to hear it or not. And if they don't hear it, they're in trouble. And if they do hear it, it's a glorious opportunity for a new life in them. So what an amazing 10th uh, chapter of Luke this is, even so far, and it goes obviously beyond this. So he sent out 12 yesterday, I mean, last chapter. He sent out 70 this chapter. The same things are that their, their only provision is what the Lord provides through the hospitality of the people. The difference is it's going out to Gentiles as well as to Jews, and the number is bigger, so the impact is bigger. And then, uh, and we'll see how their how their mission trip works, short term mission trip works, uh, in in tomorrow. Lord, we thank you that you've sent us out on long term and short term mission trips. We would ask that we would be all that you would have us to be, that we would speak from your heart, that we would walk in your joy and your peace and your power. Bring glory to yourself through us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Blessings to you all. See you tomorrow, Lord willing. Walk in abundance. Amen. Bye-bye.